If only I had been there. I could have prevented it all. After the success of the rather excellent Deponia series, German-based studio Dedelic Entertainment is back with another slice of point-and-click heaven in the form of the Knight of the Rabbit. Inspired by the likes of Alice in Wonderland, it tells the story of Jerry Hazelnut, a 12-year-old boy who dreams of being a magician, but only has two days of summer vacation left to fulfil his dreams. Outside and enjoy the sunshine! You don't want to sleep away your whole summer vacation, do you? Like most children, Jerry creates his own adventures from his surroundings, making up stories about different things he sees in the forest beside his grey city home be it about a family of mischievous spiders or a dwarf-shaped rock. The juxtaposition of the grey urban city against the lush green forest gives you a sense that his life is already full of magic. Then I'll be stuck down there in a classroom again. Now that's an even worse thought. <sighs> but it's not until he meets the Marquis de Hoto that his dream of becoming a magician finally begins to take shape. This man-sized rabbit transports young Jerry into a living, breathing fantasy world, and it's here where Jerry's dreams of being a magician start to come true. The action is your standard point-and-click fare of collecting items and using them to progress the story further, sometimes combining two or more items in order to solve a puzzle. Most of the puzzles aren't overly obtuse, but they did pose a challenge. If you do get stuck though, when you first meet Dehoto, he enchants Jerry's lucky coin so you can see all the clickable objects in a room, just in case you miss something the first time around. My magic will protect you from being forgotten. He also enchants your magical wand, which gives you the Advice Seeker spell ability. This spell gives you hints and story reminders direct from Dehoto without having to travel to find him. These are familiar point-and-click mechanics, but Dedelic has managed to weave them nicely into the story. Dialogue trees add further to the puzzles in the game, and the witty dialogue is a treat to listen to. Similarly, the voice acting shines through, each character sounding unique, with their personalities coming alive through their voices. Way too healthy! I don't eat things like that! As you push through the narrative, you learn more about the mythical portal trees, which act as gateways to other worlds. It's there you're first introduced to Mousewood, a city which houses anthropomorphic animals who also speak English, further highlighting the inspiration of Alice in Wonderland. Follow me, Jeremiah Hazelnut. It's in Mousewood where you learn about what it takes to be a magician's apprentice, and you also meet a ghost-like creature called the Wood Sprite, who pops up to look over young Jerry. Only time will tell what role this character plays in the story, but from what we've seen so far, he's not going to be much help. Follow me. What's impressive about the Knight of the Rabbit, even at this early stage, is the attention to detail. You really get the feeling that the fantasy world created here is a living, breathing place, full of eccentric characters who have stories or problems to tell you. Hey, hey you, this is private property, get out of my garden. The art style too is wonderfully realised, with the hand-drawn visuals and colourful character designs helping to suck you into the game's world and its delightful story. From what we've played so far, The Knight of the Rabbit is shaping up to be an enjoyable and charming point-and-click adventure. Look out for more on GameSpot when the game is released for PC and Mac on May 29th. From now on, casting magic and wandering between worlds will be an important part of your life.